That's him, J.J. the Jet Plane, main protagonist of the 1998's children's show, J.J. the Jet Plane. Now, to many, this may seem like another harmless Thomas the Train clone, which, trust me, is creepy in its own way. But to me, J.J. was not only much worse, but was the source of much childhood fear and anxiety. My mom would put this show on for me and I was always repulsed by it and even cried on several occasions but she insisted and low-key made me sit through it until I saw that it was just a cute, harmless show. This was one of the first TV shows I watched growing up, along with normal children's shows like Blue's Clues and Franklin the Turtle, which I look back at very fondly. Now, this show was in production between 1998 and 2005. Perfect forming years for a young Yo Gab. Some of my earliest memories in my life was this stupid, ugly plane. I used to have a lot of nightmares as a kid, different types of monsters and darknesses always overpowering me and taking me and killing me. I'd say about over 50% of them was because of this plane. Another good percent of it was the old design of Jinx from Pokemon, but that's for another day. In doing research for this video, I started thinking, you know, maybe this isn't really as creepy or scary as I thought it was. I was just being dramatic and I should just let this memory die. And then I saw it. I realized that this isn't what gave me the nightmares. The original was what gave me the nightmares. Yes, so it turns out that JJ got remade or remastered for whatever reason, probably trying to compete with the success of Thomas the Train. But look at these dead eyes. I get that they were trying to make a TV show on a budget, but why would you do this? This is an atrocity with no consideration how children will perceive this. And not only are these faces horrifying, but their voices are just as bad. Listen to this. Surely everyone was impressed with my flying. Hey, Tracy, isn't it exciting? Although I find them all terrifying, I do have to single out a few characters especially. This is Big Jake, a mentor slash father figure for JJ, who honestly just looks like an older, angrier, drunken version of JJ. I mean, just watch how they introduced him. Toughest looking plane in the fleet. Big Jake opened one huge eye and stared right at JJ. His piercing gaze made the little jet shudder. JJ nervously introduced himself. Hello, my name is JJ. But Big Jake said nothing. He just stared. Uh, you know what? Said JJ. Today will be my very first flight. Big Jake looked unimpressed. Then, shutting his enormous eye, Big Jake thought about his first flight many, many years ago. So, fun fact, he's actually the one that brought me to tears as a child. Uh, he was disappointed in JJ because he didn't follow his first flight plan on his first trial or whatever, and Big Jake proceeds to cry. This freaked me out because I didn't understand why he was so upset and I still don't. I was still in diapers, what the heck? But this is the face right here that was engraved in the back of my psyche for all these years and I didn't even know it. And apparently I wasn't alone in thinking this because after the first episode they had to change his design entirely, making him much less stern looking and way more smiley. Oh god, still terrifying. Big Jake was bad, but I think the scariest character was Savannah the Fighter Jet, and I don't think it'll take much to convince you. Just watch this. No time left, JJ. Better head for the shelter before it's too late. But easy. What about Tracy? Savannah looked everywhere for Tracy and JJ. Tracy? Tracy. JJ? JJ? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Time. Tracy? Tracy. JJ? Where are you? She hollered. JJ flew up behind her. Here I am, Savannah. She spun around and gasped. Oh, JJ, thank goodness you're all right. Actually, I edited that. Here's the real version. Oh, JJ, thank goodness you're all right. For some reason, there are no female voice actors in the show. I'm only now realizing all the voices are done by the same person, so you get female characters that sound like this. 
So, honey, what's on your mind? You're wonderful, and I want to be just like you, but I don't know how, and I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. And he does all the voices, so you get some moments that could be offensive to some people. Welcome home, my dear. Thanks, Easy. You're still sweet as sugar cane, she said. Big Jake and JJ saw the head of a young man peeking out from a palm tree. They call me Lucky. We on Pangabula are lucky too, said Lucky. We have been given a second chance to take care of it. Anyway, I can't take much more of this, so I'm just going to leave you guys with a few of these comments that people left about the show. It did make me feel better to know I wasn't the only one that felt this way about the show. There was one comment that was so outrageous and funny that I have to read it out to you. God cannot have smiled down upon this green earth when he created David Mitchell, the force of pure unadulterated evil that has brought this horrific creation to the eyes and minds of our children. I have so many questions, all of which are unanswered. Why does Herky have an accent? That would imply that these cyborgs speak different languages and engage culturally, yet Terrytown, isolated in that it never sees ethically diverse visitors. Is Snuffy a mouse slash human slash plane hybrid? How has evolution progressed for these planes to exist, yet Brenda looks exactly as modern humans do today? My best working theory is that alien invasion took place, which extraterrestrial maggots house inside machinery seize control of our Earth, damning all living humans to serve and tend to the needs of their young. Humans believe that creating aerodynamic shells for these beasts would encourage them to leave, which is why Snuffy is seen flying into outer space in one of the episodes. I still have no explanation as to why Terrytown is the only town we see, or why these towns are so far apart from each other. This is not a children's show. This is a cautionary prophecy about the fate of humanity forever enslaved by our ultimate plane overlords. Woe to David Mitchell, the bestial demon who unleashed this tormented imagery we illegally call JJ the Jet Plane. Well said, Anwar Bessem. Well said. You know, even though I legitimately got sick to my stomach rewatching this show, it feels good to confront this fear I had so many years ago. And now I can finally put this weird chapter of my life in the past and let it stay in the past. That's right, there's a brand new JJ coming out as I'm making this video in 2022. When I started this video, I thought there was only one version of this show, and it turns out, there's three. Well, at least this one doesn't have stupid human faces stapled on them, so maybe it won't be so bad. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching to the end, Yo Gab, signing out.